Hello my friends, my name is James and in today's video I'm going to share with you the exact resume that got me hired as a software developer when I had no computer science qualification, I had no tech work experience yet I still got hired and I'm also going to share with you a second resume that has since gotten me lots of different interviews for software engineering roles at some of the biggest tech companies in the world. Furthermore, I'm also going to share with you five golden rules that you absolutely have to follow. So it should be absolutely action packed. If you enjoy it, don't forget to smash the like and subscribe button so that I can continue to feed Doug a healthy diet. So the first resume we're going to take a look at in this video before we dive into the golden rules is the resume that got me a job in the first place. Now this is brilliant if you don't have any work experience to your name, even if you don't have a qualification. I get a lot of people asking me, how am I supposed to build a resume when I've got really nothing to say about myself? Well, let's take a look at the one that worked for me. Up the top, first and foremost, we have a professional summary. Doesn't matter who you are, everybody needs a professional summary. When you're applying for jobs and you're sending through your resume, you have a few seconds to make an imprint or leave an impression for the recruiter. My one says that I'm a self-taught software developer. I like problem solving and design, and it also has some of my specialities in addition to mentioning some of my soft skills. So almost immediately, the recruiter has an impression or understanding of what kind of candidate am I and whether or not the resume is worth looking into further. After that, since I did a career transition, I did actually have a few years of work experience in another industry. And this is actually quite funny because I get a lot of resumes from people looking to career transition and they have years and years of work experience that's just totally unrelated to tech. These tech bros do not care. They just only care about your programming knowledge. That's literally it. So the moral of the story is that I summarize years of experience in a different industry literally in two short lines that were the highlights of that career. This is not necessarily this is just what it came to from my experience. The real secret to the self-taught resume, as I call it, or if you're an intern looking for an internship, you don't have any work experience, is the project section of the resume. To get a job, you need to be credible. The hiring manager or whoever it is that's recruiting for the role needs to believe that you can meet the criteria of the job description. If you have a qualification, that's one way of doing it. If you have work experience, that's a second way of doing it. There are still secrets on how to do that effectively that we will cover shortly, but if you don't have either of those, then projects is where it absolutely needs to come from. Now the project section of this resume is pretty much written out as if it were my job. I have the different projects I worked on. If you wanna know what kind of projects you need to get hired, you can check out these links. These are the projects that I had at the time when I got my first job. You can kind of benchmark your experience based off of them. And there's some secrets to how I've structured the description of the projects that I will talk about very in depth shortly. But the moral of the story, at the very bottom I've got my education, then I've got a summary of my skills. If we print this bad boy off and look at it in a PDF, basically what it looks like, we have a quick professional summary, most of it, is in fact the project section. And the reason it's so critical is recruiters are looking for keywords. If they're hiring someone and they need experience with Next.js and Tailwind CSS, I've shown that I've done that. And then when they wanna go and further explore, they can see how I've used the keywords that they're looking for through the medium of the project, which is hopefully going to impress them even further. Now it's best if your projects demonstrate an array of skills, cause that's going to make you more generally employable. For example, here I talk about front-end development with Next.js and Tailwind CSS. I've also demonstrated my ability to add analytics to websites. In this one, I talk about using machine learning models inside of a client or browser, which is kind of impressive. I discuss some back-end development with Node.js and Express. I talk about how I can handle payments and transactions using the Stripe API. And in the last one, we talk about you know, some more JavaScript related things and uh, rule-based algorithm development and stuff like that. So across all three projects, you can see that I have a pretty comprehensive skill set. Now, if we take a look at the one that I use today, this is if I'm ever interested in a job and I want to explore it, the one that I will send out. And this is also the example I'm going to use to demonstrate some of the golden rules that you have to follow. Once again, pretty self-explanatory. We have the professional summary at the top of the page. 
Next is the professional experience. Now, if you have experience, that is always going to be the best thing to get you a job, assuming it is related to the industry or jobs that you are applying for. If a recruiter sees that you have been hired by someone else for a significant period of time, that's credibility for them. They understand that you're probably not a dropkick and hopefully they won't regret their decision. Now, it's at this point that I'm going to introduce the first golden rule in resume development, and that is not having a graphic resume. If we come over to Google, if your resume looks like one of these, then you need to cull it in favor of a simple and bland resume. Graphic resumes don't work for a number of reasons. First and foremost, they are hard to interpret. You have to make a quick first impression. If your resume is unpredictable, it's not in a bland, boring format, then I'm gonna have to go searching for information, which is not something I really want to do. Reason number two is that the graphic design that you think looks good opens you up to subjective interpretation. A recruiter might not like the color scheme or format that you have used, and that's just not something that you really want to be included into the decision-making process. It should be very objective based on your experience alone which is why a bland resume template works best and reason number three is for the applicant tracking system or ATS screening systems. A lot of recruiters might not even see your resume if the little crawler robots can't interpret it. A bland resume, very easy to read. A graphic resume is more confusing to them and just adds another element of unpredictability as to whether or not you'll get through that screening system in the first place. So golden rule number one, pick a bland template. If you want this template that I've used, you can access it for free at hire.sh. Now the second thing that's always important that we've kind of already seen is the content priority. If you have professional experience and it says something about you, then include it as much as necessary first and foremost. For example, I now have experience working for a tech company, so that is absolutely included. After that, I still have my projects, and finally I have my education, because as soon as you have work experience, your education is ever so slightly more outdated. And then at the bottom, I have the skills. If they want an executive summary of the tech that I know, they can go and see that. That's the format that works best for me, but obviously if we look at the other version, the projects is the priority in this one because I didn't have tech work experience and my education was irrelevant. So in addition to the order, you also want to add the content where it is most appropriate. In this case, it's projects, and with my work one, it's the work experience. So that's golden rule number two. Number three is that you need to write out all of your descriptions in the active voice. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the active voice, there's basically two different voices you can write in. One is the passive voice and one is the active voice. The passive voice is like if I said responsible for X, Y, and Z. It's not very engaging, it's not very gripping, whereas an active voice is something like I developed, I did this, I innovated, I optimized. In resumes nowadays, what they do is they start off with the punchy verb first. For example, if we look here, everything is written in the active voice built this, developed this, maintained that, implemented that. A popular one is spearheaded, served, engineered, optimized, created, produced, utilized. Everything needs to be written in the active voice because by its very nature, it's just more engaging and it's going to be more interesting for recruiters to read. So that's rule number three. You need to write everything in the active voice. Now for rule number four, this one is arguably the most important of all. Whenever I review resumes and boy, do I review a lot of them. This is the one that I find most people struggle with. And it's all about communicating your experience. Every sentence that I have written in this resume follows one singular rule. I like to summarize it as I did X using Y to achieve Z. You could also think of it as what did I do, how did I do it, and to what effect. If we look at an example here, I did something, built a full stack platform using Next.js and Tailwind CSS to what's the outcome allow users to efficiently create X, Y, and Z. If we look at this one here, what did I do? I developed a front-end secure user interface. How did I do it with Next.js and Tailwind CSS? What's the outcome or effect? I delivered a refined and optimized user experience. This sentence structure allows you to tell a story and it's once again much more interesting and it really helps to quantify exactly what it was that you were responsible in your job. Now at this point, it's almost a gimmick as to how much of a requirement this is inside of a resume. If you don't use this sentence structure, it shows that you don't understand the lingo and etiquette that is required for a tech resume and you're going to get insta rejected. Literally ATS screening systems are looking for the sentence structure because it verbatim shows whether or not you're in the loop, whether you have the know-how. And when you are using the sentence structure, it's also important that you find a way to include it in a singular sentence. Now, if you're not brilliant with your words, one thing you can do if you sign up for hire.sh is click this enhance button 
and it will take whatever you've written and revised it so that it meets this criteria and uses this sentence structure and also it makes it very concise. So that might be something interesting to try out for you, but you absolutely have to use this sentence structure for your projects, your work experience, and your qualifications where appropriate. So that was golden rule number four. Last but not least is the one page rule. If you have less than 10 years of work experience, your resume needs to be on one page, end of story, no questions asked. Here, my resume fits perfectly to one page. It's cut off at the bottom, but it totally does. There you can see the bottom of the page. I print it and submit it. That's everything there is to my name. Once again, this is just another etiquette rule that you have to understand. And it just shows recruiters that you're not in the loop if you're not following the rules. And that's pretty much everything to the resume that got me a job that continues to get me interviews to this very day. If you want to build this exact template, you can sign up and produce it at hire.sh. Link is in the description down below. And also I'd be curious to know which of these golden rules are you already doing? If you're doing some of them, let me know in the comments down below which ones you're aware of, which ones you weren't, and what you're going to do differently in future. I'd absolutely love to hear it. As always, if you enjoyed the video, smash the like and subscribe buttons, love that support, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Learning to code? If so, be sure to check out the learn to code roadmap or dive straight in with these videos. That's a good one.